y'all. My name is Raven. Y'all know me. Everybody knows my damn name. This is low key and free form. I ain't gonna stand still because I ain't gonna let silver catch me. I'm like a flash. Motherfucking flash. First thing I want to say is hot as fuck. Thank all of you for coming here tonight. This world is spinning all over the place and people got all types of different crazy shit going on in their life. So I appreciate each and every one of you for coming to spend a little bit of time with me this, this evening. That's not a lot. I always hope these things grow and get bigger, but I love the core that is at it. I love that a lot. I love when new people become part of that core. I always wanted to grow, but I ain't got no damn time to be telling people about it. And I don't even live here, so whatever. <laughs> so um, I wanted to ask y'all, well, how many of y'all know about the elf people that live on the James River? <laughs> Anybody talked to them, met the elf people? So where I used to live in Fluvanna County, there was this place called Seven Islands. And it's Seven Islands in the James River. And I used to love going there because it's not, nobody, uh, somebody probably does it. But ain't nothing built on it. Just go over there and chill. And I used to go over there and chill all the time. And there was some elven people. This one dude started coming to me. At like first, what happened was somebody was throwing little rocks at me. So I'm like, that's fucked up. You know, like I'm sitting in the river, like on this island, and I was like, you know, I thought it was like mayflies or something. Eventually, felt like a rock hit me. One of these little dudes who was like their sentinel was hitting me with rocks. So I ended up befriending this dude. We got to know each other. He taught me some games that they play. They don't trust humans, obviously. In fact, recently, about two months ago, we had one here. I went to Texas Beach, and he told me, yo, I'm going to tell you where the dude is at Texas Beach, right off of Texas Beach, where there's some elf people there, too. Go talk to him. So I tried to go meet this guy. He came out. I went to the right tree. Did the little thing I was supposed to do. He came out. He didn't say shit to me. He won't have nothing to do with me. It was just basically polite, but the whole time, even though he was a little dude, he was just kind of looking at me like, why did Chubb send this guy to me? Chubb is a dude back in Japan. And I, I could tell, I knew what nothing gonna happen. I wasn't gonna be able to talk to this off dude, because he lives down here, deals with a whole different type of human. So when I went back to Fluvanna, I went back to the Seven Islands and I was kicking it with Chubb, and I was like, Chubb. That dude they won't have shit to do with me, man. Why'd you like send me to that guy? You knew he wouldn't say nothing to me. They don't like humans. He said, Well, I thought maybe, you know, I mean you you're a goofy ass dude. I thought maybe he'd talk to you. I don't know. So what Chubb told me was the story of the Elder Beach tree. Not a beach, like Texas Beach. The Elder Beach tree. There used to be a tree before the humans came here along the James River big old beech tree. And the elven people just had their elven shit going on, you know what I'm saying? They was just doing elven shit all day long. Come on in. It's just me babbling. So they was doing their elven shit and the elven people would pick somebody out every now and then and say, yo, you've been a top quality elf just totally doing shit for the benefit of the elven community and we want to recognize you. So you get to go put a mark on the beech tree. So whoever got selected would then go put a mark on the beech tree. Just, you know, they was told, don't fuck it up. It's like tattoos. It's not supposed to be like chopping it down. So somebody would carve something in the beech tree. And they did this for hundreds and hundreds of years. And this beech tree was huge. And it had markings from what Chubb told me that went way up, higher than like, it was like 20 elves high. And like it was all the way up. And then the humans came. And when the humans came, they saw the beech tree. And it was like, yeah, oh, that's a real big beech tree. We could make some shit out of that. So they cut the beech tree down. They cut it into segments, big long segments. And they was using the segments. Of course, the elves was like, that's fucked up. And that's just one of many transgressions that caused the elven people to not like humans and why that dude was looking at me like, why the fuck the Chubb's country ass said this dumb human motherfucker down here to talk to me? They chopped it up in segments, but then the segments wasn't enough. So they was like, well, the segments, like, they ain't really doing what we want them to do. So they started fracturing the segments, 
driving the segments into pieces. So even the segments, which were already divided up from the big beech tree, was gone. Then they started dividing it even further. And everything was all divided up. But then they ain't had no beech tree left. And they was like, well, maybe if we put it all back together, because obviously, even the humans, they had enough sense to go, maybe we fucked up. Maybe we shouldn't have divided and fractured up the beech tree like that. Y'all bring all y'all beech tree pieces back. We're going to put it back. So then they took all the pieces and was trying to put the segments together and stacking it up. And it was like poor man's Jenga. The thing was falling apart. It wasn't going back up. When they first got there, the beech tree could see all the way up to the Blue Ridge Mountains and down to the Chesapeake Bay. They could see the whole James River where Western culture first came and put its little creepy tendrils here in the North American continent. So they was trying to stack the beech tree up and all, but they couldn't do nothing about it. And I was like, well, shut up. That's obviously a pretty serious situation, especially for the elves that still exist in secret in Richmond, where the beech tree was. No wonder that dude ain't want to talk to me, you know? He said, well, yeah, he said, but, you know, we all got different philosophies about it. Down there, all they think about is how it's all busted up. And they feel really bad about it because they was right there. And it's just, anytime anybody there, they think about where that tree used to be. And it upsets them so. He said, up here, I'm a little bit further away from it. You know, we got some elders who said they wouldn't have seen it at some point. But for us, we just like to think that maybe it'll get better. And I was like, well, I mean, you can't have the beach tree again. He said, what are you talking about, man? He said, come here. Look over here. He said, look, we got this one up on the hill there on the Buckingham side that's like four elves high already. You just got to let it be, man. And I was like, but it's not the same as the big one it once was. He said, yeah, we fucked that up. You can't have that again. But what you can do is just chill out. Let it grow again. I was like, well, I mean, that's cool, but like, what if somebody sees that and wants to cut it down? He said, that ain't chilling out. That's not letting it be. That's going right back to the same thing and deciding you're going to do it again. He said, and that's really ultimately what you have to not do. I was like, all right, that makes sense. So I got to be honest, we smoked like elven weed while we were there, so, you know, which I think is Jimson weed, to be honest. But you get your mind right with the elf. And I was thinking about it, and I like that lesson because. Right now, shit is fucked up, y'all. Shit is fucked up. I know I have conversations with many of you personally, and I know life is hard right now for a lot of people. Life is hard for people that you don't think it's hard for. And people you do think it's hard for, it's even harder than you know. Life is fucked up right now. It's tense. It makes you feel crazy. On my way here tonight, in fact, on my way here, driving down the interstate, plugging along. Got my tunes playing, just cruising along. Got to pass some people because they all trying to get off at the same exit. This dude gets right up on my ass. Right on my ass. I can't go nowhere. This car's there. So they turn. I get over in the next lane. So the dude, instead of going past, pulls up beside me with his window down. It's like, fuck you. Young, angry, blank-eyed white dude got head earbuds in while he's driving. Fuck you, motherfucker! Roll your window down. So I rolled my window down. I was like, "Fuck you," because I'm tense. I'm ready to fucking crap. So he starts to drive off. I just honk my horn at him. So he hits the brakes right beside me. He's like, "Roll the window down." So I did. I'm like, "What's up? What's up, motherfucker?" And he drove off. So I got behind him. And I stayed, you know, within an eighth of a mile behind him for about 25 miles. Long enough so this, oh, by the way, when he took off, got a choose life license plate and a bumper sticker about how he believes. But I stayed close enough behind him that he could have the fear that maybe I was going to kill him. And that thought crossed my mind because we was in Charlottesville and we saw what happened in Charlottesville firsthand. And you think to yourself, just like the elves up here, you think about the beech tree that got chopped down, and you want to kill a motherfucker. You don't want to talk to him. You don't want to see that humanity. 
but I try to remind myself when times is harder, what my man Chubb said, chill out. Something else will grow. Take care of your community. Help those around you. And don't worry about the rest of them. You can't control the rest of them. Control what you can. Tend those that you care for and build something new. So I say that to y'all because we're going to hit an election cycle where people are going to be telling you what you're supposed to or not supposed to do. And I'm here to tell you all I want you to do take care of your motherfucking community. The people around you. I don't give a fuck if you vote. I don't give a fuck if you can vote, can't vote. Take care of the people around you. Tend your community. Because that will exist when all the rest of this falls apart. And if all the rest of it doesn't fall apart, which I pray every night that it doesn't, you still build community. It's like a garden. You tend in the garden. So you're building something, whether it goes good or bad. So that's what I want to say to y'all to kick this bad boy off tonight. My name is Raven. Y'all know me as the Dirt God. We are sponsored tonight generously by Building Experiences, a nonprofit in Central Virginia, run by my partner in Foolishness, Dolly. Well, one of the people that runs it. There's many people that run it. I've met a lot of wonderful young adults. It's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a mentoring program, but it's also like family. It's like community. And Anai is one of the people who I've met through that. Wonderful human being. Lives here in Richmond doing amazing things. Tend in your community because beautiful things will grow. Even in the midst of this fucked up world we're living in, beautiful things can grow. Alright. Y'all good? We're going to have a haiku slam. We're going to have a battle war for everybody who wants to take part in the battle war. And I got a deathmatch opponent tonight that I did not announce because I was worried that they asked wasn't going to show up. <laughs> and sure enough, they got here. As late as you can get. <laughs> Monique, in fact, when we did this, when I resurrected this last year in Charlottesville, Monique came up in the Firefly where we had it, beat up on everybody, just beat everybody, won like the whole thing, and I was like, all right, well, we're going to do a death match. You want? I want to do a death match. She ain't been back since. <laughs> whole year, ain't been back. But tonight, we're going to have a death match. I hope y'all will enjoy it. But first, we're going to have a haiku slam. Actually, first, before I do that, before I put that down, you're going to have to wrap it back up. A couple years back, well, first of all, y'all know about my railroad haiku spikes? These are railroad spikes I wild harvest along that James River. And I carved haiku into it, giving myself some sort of cancer, I'm sure. But I enjoy doing it. <laughs> they hard, you can hit people with them. They're railroad spikes. I love them. I try to sell them online. Don't lot of people buy them. I love them. I tend to give away more than myself. A couple years back, I had one I brought to an event at Balasso, R.I.P. Balasso. They had a haiku. Said, identifying birds by yelling. What the fuck is you doesn't work. <laughs> now, I had promised this to Angie. But then when I went to the haiku slam, this was the only prize I had was this haiku on a different spot. And we had a haiku slam, and I gave it to the winner. It was mother. I never recreated a haiku on a spike. But it ate at me for years that I told Angie I was going to make her this thing. I didn't give it to her. She was cool. She's like, no, that's cool. I mean, I understand. You gave it, you know, you had to give it away. But it was that like, it's cool kind of thing where you like, kind of like when I met the elf up here and he was looking at me and he's like, yeah, all right. And I'm like, this ain't all right. <laughs> so I made another one for Angie. These are my haiku spikes. I'm going to go ahead and give her this. There's two little black rubber bands in the back of the Now you ain't got to make me feel guilty. Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> I give more of those away than I sell because I love them. I love my art. I love these events. I love what I do. All right. Enough jibber-jabber. 
Let's see. What am I going to do here? I got three McDaniels here. <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven competitors and three of them is McDaniels. <laughs> do I have anybody else that wants to sign up? Are you, you looking to compete? You just here to watch? That's cool. Ain't no, ain't no shame in that. I'm going to figure out an order here. Raggedy ass man. You never got pens of work. All right, let's see. How am I going to do this? Y'all give me a second to write this out. <laughs> All right. So if you've not been here before, the way this works is I got a rainbow flag, I got a pirate flag. We got little flags in our hands. I got three judges that have both flags as well. Two competitors come up. Rainbow side goes first, reads a haiku. Pirate side reads a haiku. Judges throw up a flag for whichever one they pick. There's three judges. Two out of three flags wins the round. Judges, don't get stressed out. Don't freak out. You just judge it how it feels. You can judge poetic ability. You can judge like it touched a soft spot. You can judge it made you laugh. You can just be like, I didn't even really listen, but I kind of, the second one sounded cooler. Like, whatever you do is cool. There's three of y'all. So it's two out of three. It ain't on any one of y'all. The big warning I give, though, is... If you wait too long and the other two judges hold up opposite flags, the whole room will look at you waiting for you to put up the flag. So just the whole flag. Don't think about it. Whoever loses the round reads first the next round, and we do that until there are eliminations. There's only seven of y'all, so we're going to do best of five. First round, best of seven next round, and best of nine in the finals. Can y'all handle that? All right, coming up first on the rainbow side, made a raucous debut last time we were here. Rockets. Come in. We ain't know who this I didn't know who this person was. I ain't know what to expect. And she just crushed it. Just killed it. Y'all give it up for Trisha. Um. And on the pirate side, somebody that's been with me for a long time. And I'm going to tell you some of these people that came up. I'm doing one online right now on Twitter. I did a high two slam on Twitter, which has been pretty annoying, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but two of the kids that made the finals are my daughter, or my child, and her friend, another kid who comes from ones in Charlottesville, Asher, they made the finals. And there's all these kids that have come up through this thing. And this young person is going away to college next month. And I feel like a sad uncle. But y'all give it up for Fran. <laughs> Best of five. First one to win three. Trisha, you get to go first. All right. Twenty years of tongue, piercing and chewing. Forty. Why I crunch my tooth. <laughs> Friends. Once I took a girl on a hike, then found out she's allergic to trees. <laughs> <laughs> Judges. All right. Trisha got the first one. I got to turn around for a second. Trisha's up one to nothing. How are you allergic to trees? That's crazy. All right, Fran, you get to go first. Down one nothing. Mercury retrograde is going great. Can't you tell? I shaved my head. <laughs> Trisha. Squidward, my hero, consigned to minimum wage. Who will see your worth? Judges. <laughs> All right, Trisha's up two to nothing. Two to nothing. Fran, get to go first. Down two to nothing. It is so hot out. My swamp ass has swamp ass, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's like river ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hanover County, you Civil War piece of shit. Why are you so pretty? <laughs> <laughs> Judges. All right, Trisha took it with the clean sweep. Oh. <laughs> Fran will be back up for the battle order. All right, coming up next on the rainbow side, y'all give it up for my cousin Dolly. <laughs> Yeah. 
And on the other side, y'all give it up for my cousin Paul. <laughs> Dolly gets to go first. Mm-hmm. That's the five. The dog and I have not had a fruitful convo about mom's death yet. Paul. Mothball grape juice scent of Sunday school rooms beneath Southern Baptist Church. Judges. All right, Dolly's up one to nothing. Paul needs to go first. Fuck Anglo stylings. Who, Harry, Bond, Pythons, Queens. Burn down masterpiece. Huh. Dolly. <laughs> I don't recall the being a toxic pain in the ass stage of grief. <laughs> All right, Dolly's up two to nothing. Paul, you get to go first. Down two to nothing. South of James High Royal. Worried that we lost thanks for Shimmy She Wobble. Dolly. <clears throat> Stress of caregiving replaced by the ache of grief, sorrow, regret. Judges. All right, Paul took that one. Two to one, Dolly is up. Dolly, you can go first. <clears throat> Death and taxes are both inevitable, but taxes are bigger jerks. <laughs> Paul, you're going back here. Trash academic seeks publisher for study of Manson Mac Dix. Huh. All right, Paul took that. Two to two. Tied up. Whoever wins this one moves on. Whoever doesn't win this one still gets to hang out. <laughs> Dolly, you go first. Mm. Who's throwing out hospice morphine? You're not on my apocalypse team. (laughs) 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 Only camouflage and soccer shirts and closet, scoring goals unseen. Judges. All right, Paul took it with the unseen goals. Y'all give it up for Dolly. So Dolly is my partner now, and she had a, a mother pass. And it's like when you're dating somebody and you feel good about your relationship with them, sometimes things happen that like just like make it deeper. Can I say what I did? Yeah. <laughs> we had a country burial on her family's land, and me and her brother and cousin and a couple other people actually dug the grave. And I can't tell you how humbling an experience that is to be part of something like that. Like, we get so removed from so many things in the way we live nowadays, even something like that we're so removed from. And it was, it was beautiful, and I'm very thankful for that. But it made me feel very attached to that place. So I don't know why I shared that other piece. I sometimes overshare. <laughs> Rainbow side, y'all give it up for the person who can no longer hold over my head in any sort of fashion that I ain't give him a railroad fight. <laughs> y'all give it up for Angie. Man. <laughs> and it wasn't like side, that <laughs> at all. On the other side, y'all give it up for Jason. <laughs> Now, did you compete last time? No. Okay, that's what I thought. I didn't want to say he ain't competing. He was like, well, wait a second, man. When I went up there, you were getting in love. You know, you don't remember? No, so Jason's making his debut right now. Angie, you get to go first. I baked you a pie, but then I ate all of it. It's the thought that counts. Jason? McDaniels don't give up. They bitch and moan and complain, but they don't give up. <laughs> All right, Angie's up one to nothing. Jason, you get to go first. My indifference is a defense strategy that rarely pays off. The older they get, the more boring they become. Wanted some new friends. Judges. All right, Angie took that one up two to nothing. (laughs) That one did a little closer, huh? (laughs) Jason, you get to go first. Burn the rebel flag. Southern pride isn't a thing. How about no, Kyle? (laughs) Summer slurpy brain freeze. The cool sweetness and then the pain. Oh, the pain. 
Judges. Angie took it three to nothing. Y'all give it up for Angie. Now, we shall go to best of seven, because it ain't before, y'all. Are you going to judge for now? Just for a Okay. Coming up on the rainbow side, hadn't yet come up, automatically advanced to the semifinals. Let me tell y'all something. So I've been doing this in Charlottesville and Richmond this year, every other month. I'm going to do one in Blacksburg next month. I'm going to start doing them in Williamsburg, I think, in September. And every time I do one, even the Twitter one, I keep track of who wins, comes in second, who does the death match, and who wins the battle roll. And I've been keeping points. You know why? In December, I'm going to have the year-end championship in Charlottesville where me and the top seven point getters who can make it from the year have a tournament of death matches at the T-Bazaar. And I got a dude, a friend of mine in Wisconsin, who said he's going to kick some prize money in on it. I don't know if that means $38 or $10,000. I don't know what it means, but we're going to see. We're going to have a tournament of death matches. And the reason I bring that up right now is because in the current standings, number one, I mean other than me, but I don't keep points for myself. Number one is Mo. So Mo, come on up. On the other side, this is going to tickle me. This is going to be a good best of seven right here. Trisha, come on back up. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We got a Hanover crazy versus Louisa crazy. Oh, oh, you don't Hanover original. Yeah. Are you from Louisa original? No, I'm, I'm from okay. Hanover. <laughs> Hanover crazy. The water. Right here. <laughs> All right, Mo, you get to go first. Best of seven. It's the first one to win four. <clears throat> Eyebrows have one job, and this week, the sweat breached the eyebrow levees. Fail. Trisha? I'll go with failure, too. Gonna fail next week. At soccer, apparently. What else is new, though? Judges? Alright, Mo is up one to nothing. Trisha, you get to go first. Sun Tzu thought of war, but his words are for our lives. Attack your problems. <laughs> Racist in chief or rapist in chief, it's really all piss poor options. Judges? Alright, Trisha took that one. One to one. Mo, you get to go first. Parenting is not even caring when you have pee pee on your clothes. Whisker, whisker, why? You are so hard to pluck from there. Fuck off from my chin. <laughs> All right, Trish is up two to one. Mo, you get to go first. Told my co workers Virgo season is coming as I rearranged. Popcorn panacea until it is just kernels. Then we do battle. Judges. All right, Mo took that one. Tied up two to two. Going to four. Trish, you get to go first. Ooh. KKK took my feeling of community away. Fucking twats. <laughs> <laughs> Medieval peasants had more vacation time than we do. Forsooth, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trisha took that one up three to two. Mo, you get to go first. Recently, I dyed my hair green. Toddler says, Mo, a tree on your head. <laughs> my fan sits quiet, and I sweat on the toilet. Where is my God now? Alright, Trisha took it, y'all. Trisha comes forward to you. Y'all give it up for Mo. Alright, best of seven. 
Island coming back up on the rainbow side, my man Paul. Coming up on this side, stall side. Oh, Angie, I got lost there. I, I had to look at my list. Angie, y'all give it up for Angie. So before we do this, I want to tell y'all about a website I have now called footballmetaphysics.space. It's about football, meaning soccer. Today at work, I was walking through the halls of the UVA hospital and two trim beards. I call them trim beards because they have nice trim beards. They're, they're serious professionals. Like just, just a beard. It's just a fashionable beard. They were walking down the hall and they were talking and I happened to hear them as I walked past and one guy's like, yeah, I like football. Uh, not American football, European football. And I got so mad because I'm like, man, they play that football everywhere in the world, not Europe. Like, why you call it European? Like, that's as bad as saying American football. Well, not as bad. But it's still kind of bad. But anyways, footballmetaphysics.space is a soccer website, but not really. Because it's about football metaphysics. So it's analysis of the metaphysical through the prism of soccer, or football. Because that's a deeply sedimented, fucked up world. And Paul helps me write with that. So that's why I mentioned it. Because he's also wearing a soccer shirt. Now I always wear a soccer shirt, but I call it a football shirt. But then I can't say football shirt because somebody says, that's not like American football. And I'm like, no, and not <laughs> European either. Because <laughs> that's a South American jersey. All right. Tangent aside, Paul, you get to go first. Best of seven. First one to win four. Singing cats are cute, I guess. T.S. Eliot's still a Nazi, though. <laughs> Angie? Ruth has a coffee wake me up just enough to ask, did I have coffee? <laughs> Judges. All right, Angie's up one to nothing. Paul, you can go first. Existential pain of thin blue line stickers on box Chevys with rims. <laughs> <laughs> the older I get, the more I realize I'm just a basic bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Judges. Angie took that one. That one hurt, though. Yeah. <laughs> Paul's down two to nothing. Storm winds fell pine tree. I planted 40 years back. How long can I stand? Angie. Another fish has died. Peter to be held at five in bathroom. Judges. <laughs> All right, Paul took that one. Two to one. Angie, you're up. You get to go first. How much can I fit into a haiku format? Uh oh, I'm out of. <laughs> <laughs> Wood pallet, milk crate, coffee table. Cigarettes, block, fall through the cracks. Judges. And she took that one up three to one. Paul, you need to go first. Historic marker, neighborhood debates. My dog shits in front of house. <laughs> Angie. The bartender said to the neuron, for you, sir, there'll be no charge. <laughs> oh, my God. Judges. And Paul took it. Paul took that round. He's distilled down three to two. I was shocked that that scientific pun was not rewarded. <laughs> and you get, get to go first. Up three to two. Workplace bathroom has me thinking these heifers have the nastiest homes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. Parents hoarding that window unit. Bedroom chill box fan for the cans, for the kids. Judges? Angie took it, four to two, y'all. Y'all give it up for Paul. All right, so Tricia and Angie, y'all going to do best of nine here in a little bit, a few minutes. So make sure y'all got nine. If y'all ain't got nine, y'all can do best of seven, I guess. But right now... We will go ahead and do a death match. Fair enough. Monique, come on up and prepare to be Are you ready for best of 19? You got 19? Because that's what a death match is. Alright. 
<laughs> she gonna be on the rainbow side. I'm gonna be on the pirate side. I ain't gonna hold no flags. Jason, can you keep track of the score for me? I can try. Because I get in the heat of battle and I don't do my best. Yeah. We did this in Charlottesville last time and I got whooped. I got whooped, man. My man Waterloo, who is an MC in Charlottesville, I was trying to get more MCs to do this. I was trying to get an MC from Richmond to do this here this month, but he was tied up. And I'm hoping to get him. But Waterloo crushed me, man. It was like, what was it, like six to one before I even started winning any rounds. And I think I lost like 10 to six. And I think a lot of that was just the judges was like, oh, I feel bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> just like his event, he gets him strong, you know? <laughs> Don't be fucking with the judges don't like me. And you got a judge. All right, Monique gets to go first. Of course, grass is greener when bathed in chemical spills, envy, and spite. Making illegal U turn talking on cell phone, blasting Jim Croce. <laughs> Took that one up one nothing. I'm down one nothing. Not RVA, it's Richmond! Old gentrifiers yell at newer ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes, another glass. The horns aren't done yet singing my Sunday to sleep. Alright, one to one. You get to go first. Melon and Rainbow gathered round Oprah and Green's Pop Pop's Quiet Pride. Middle Management Supervisor Class Treason Assimilation. <laughs> All right, Monique took that one. I'm down to the one. I get to go first. My morality often compromised to make minimum payments. How could I have known that tail wag and doe-eyed gaze could fill my lone heart? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna be the damn puppy haiku. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm down three to one. Patriarchal norms plus shitty insurance means no vasectomy. <laughs> Dinner tables of my past, ham hocks and kimchi, happy side by side. All right, I took that one. That might have been a song. Three to two. Three to two, you winning right now. You get to go first. should touch or kiss her well-dressed, lifeless vessel, lest bad dreams keep you. Walking dirty south train tracks, me and Kudzu, twin invasive species. <laughs> three to three. Bonded by blood or ever empty bank accounts, kinfolks in all forms. Clothing optional haiku slam at Texas Beach. <laughs> Judges, flags, panties. <laughs> Sweat stained, sweet tea moves, legs stretched, toes bare, skirt hiked high, calloused hands fine. Could have said boxers, but to be honest, prefer wearing silk panties. <laughs> I get to go first. What is it? Four to four? Yep. Four to four. Antifa flavored snack chips. Wake up and fight your hunger's oppression. <laughs> <laughs> Mom 
says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulallah. 70, baby. <laughs> 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 Judges. Y'all Islamophobic? Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Five before, I'm up. You get to go first. Nina, angel's voice, filled with hurt, sings powerful, you know how I feel. Recurring nightmare where I work my whole life, no retirement. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Oh, I took that one. Okay. What is that? Six to four? Yep. Six to four. All right. This is for my niece and nephew who are in rival... HBC drum lines. And it's pretty funny to watch them the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Hear the drum line. Black excellence in 4 4, new beats marching forward. Box fan blowing hot air in more direct fashion to simulate cool. <laughs> All right, we'll be took that one. So 6 to 5, I'm up. You won that round, I get to go first. Parking lot taco truck, buzzing generator, and broken Spanish. Yeah. Word stylings on tap, last minute creative flow, finds a love and soul. Stumbling on old jukes of the Delta, eyes wide open. Ryan sends regards away on vacation with his family, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she took that one. What's that, seven to six? Yep. I get to go first. Gentrified country stores in dying small towns. No goddamn fried gizzards! <laughs> Mom's children, now the flora she tends, seated from lands of her youth. Judges. <coughs> All right, I took that one, eight to six. You get to go first. Ooh. The gift of the South, blood roots born of man's lost ways, nowhere runs deeper. Airbrush t-shirt that says, American by birth, Southern Inshallah. <laughs> All right, we'll need to that one. What is that, eight to seven? Yeah. Eight to seven. I'm up, but you're coming back. I get to go first. All right. All right, All right here we go. Milk crates, machetes, tarps, milk crates, machetes, tarps, plus a pallet house. <laughs> <laughs> Just lead us down the path of soul saving life. Judges. Alright, so you took that one. Eight to eight. I get to go first. We need three more. It's a bigger round. I'm gonna go first. You think you got three more? Go on. 
A $60 tattoo times 20 years of fading. Perfection. <laughs> Never have I stood among so many a sea of my blood. My, I got it wrong. A sea of my kin, my blood. Judges. All right, nine to eight. You winning. You won that round, so I get to go first. Potentially losing. Y'all know I hate to lose. We're up to 17. So right. You might need two more. But if you beat me this round, that's it. Right. The dystopia is far more mundane, boring, than I had expected. <laughs> <laughs> I only need two, but I'm tired. Worked all damn day, on stretch, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so I took it nine to nine. So that means you got to find one more. <laughs> and this is it. <laughs> one last one. You know I didn't save like a good one for the end. All right. I didn't need it. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't think I read this one. I don't know if I did. All right. Out of despair, roots drive ever deeper, finding souls to be. Stockpiling Gmail addresses with 69 for apocalypse. <laughs> <coughs> Monique took it! <laughs> Monique took it. Oh, well, we'll go nowhere. Because of our sponsors. As I do, thirty dollars. And the reason we do this is because this is art in a way that people don't always recognize it. And I, thanks to Dolly hustling sponsors for me, being a sponsor, I want the world to reward art, reward beautiful people doing weird shit. That's what I'm doing. Thirty dollars, Monique. Y'all realize I lost more death matches than I won this year? Like, I might have to stop doing them. Y'all do them against each other, and I just, like, enter the regular thing. Which is not to say the regular thing is not impressive, what you do. It's just to say, I don't know if I deserve to be having the death match anymore. All right. Let's see. Do you both have nine haiku? Yes. Yes. Now. Are y'all ready to compete? <laughs> yes. Ready to get down with the get down. Best of nine. Coming up on the rainbow side is Trisha. Coming up on the pirate side is Angie. You're not from Hanover, are you? No. Where are you from? Here. Here? Here. Richmond? <laughs> Best of nine. First one to win five. You get to go first, Trisha. Baby dolls get schooled while I write up some haiku. Play is the best teacher. Wait, play is the best teacher. Sorry. Technical foul. <laughs> <laughs> Angie? Nothing much gets done when you support your cause <coughs> with your likes and double taps. Judges? Angie up one to nothing. Trisha, you get to go first. <laughs> Picture worthy is different in my weird eyes. Your filters don't help. <laughs> Today in workplace drama, who is closing the broken trash can lid? <laughs> <laughs> Judges. Trisha took that one, tied up one to one. Angie, you get to go first. Summer. Cicadas singing outside while a box fan stirs the thick air. Gold star for living, but not for following rules. Sadly, stars don't spin. Judges? Angie? 
Trisha take it up to one. Trisha, you get to go first. Sweaty ass dachshund. Keep me up all goddamn night. Why lay sideways? Why? <laughs> Forced bathing in this weather has new meaning. Nothing like swamp ass. <laughs> Judges. All right, two to two. But we do another round. Hold up, Angie. Yep. Brief interlude. My youngest child is 11 years old. I have them every other week. On Fridays, I've been taking her to my office because there's an office that she can sit in and she loves to play office. So I take her on Friday afternoon so she can just be doing office things. And I don't know what that is, but the last time I took her, the first time I took her, she got mad at me that she didn't have a computer. And I was like, why are you mad you ain't got a computer? She's like, well, I need to make a slideshow for my presentation. I'm like, whose kid is this? Like 11 year old trying to make a slideshow. So she had a computer last time. And she's wanted a dachshund so bad. She was there for 30 minutes and had emailed me a slideshow about why we should get a dachshund. <laughs> And then started writing a report to go with it. You totally should, by the way. I was like, damn. Not in this way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, two to two. Go ahead, Angie. Ice cream on the floor because I'm just too greedy. The cat benefits. Oh, little Caesars, you sent us all to the John. Pizza, pizza, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trisha took that one up three to two. Angie, you get to go first. Fiction addiction. Go to the library for one, leave with eight. Tempered glass, you say? So it can cut me for fun. <laughs> cool, thanks so much, bro. <laughs> awesome. All right, Angie took that one three to three. We're going to five. Trisha, you get to go first. See, that's the battle. Like, Monique and I had that. We had to do 19. You start to get later in the night. You get it down. You're like, oh, yeah, I wasn't even planning on reading these, but now I got to do it. So, all right, you get to go first, Trisha. Mm. <coughs> oh, humidity. Run on down into my bra. Dampness is just fine. <laughs> I'm still thinking of those nasty heifers at work. They really are gross. <laughs> <laughs> Judges. All right, Trisha took that one up four to three. Angie, this could be it. You get to go first. I took the subway <coughs> one stop too far. Right in a haiku about you. Uh, Stencil alphabet. Too wiggly for little hands. Frustrating and dumb. Judges. Angie took it four to four. This will decide who oh. wins right now. Oh. So everybody, hold on, everybody. Let's hit this all. Let's do a nature boy check real quick. Y'all know what that is? That's gonna be the one, two, three, and then we all gonna woo like nature boy Ric Flair. And if, you feel, if you had a crappy, shitty week, I want you to think about what you hate about this week, and you're gonna let it out with one big giant woo. And if you had a good week and it's Friday night and you're feeling fresh and you're wearing a fucked up green and purple silk shirt that your child brought back for you from Singapore last year, then you give a big lovely woo. So let's do it one time. One, two, three. Woo! All right, we're ready to wrap this up. Go ahead, Trisha. Audio cables, you are made of mist and glass. Just play the music. <laughs> Five syllables here, seven more syllables there. Haikus, not so hard. Judges. And Trisha took it, y'all. <laughs> 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 huh? Ten dollars for runner up. purpose of having sponsors is to reward people. It's hard to find sponsors. I had a sponsor lined up that fell through. Building experiences came through in the crunch. I'll tell your dad when he gets back. I'm mad at him. 
I'm going to talk to somebody about this for the next time. It's hard to convince small businesses to give money because usually they donate materials. But I won't go to organizations that want to give large sums of money to things necessarily because I want us to support small businesses. I want us to support community efforts. I don't believe capitalism can be moral. I don't think it can be ethical. But if we're forced to live in it, I would rather we support businesses that are independent and kick back to the community. That's important. So I would ask next time, I'm going to talk to a dude I know down here, and I hope he'll come through on the sponsorship for the rest of the year here, here at this place. Bring some people with y'all. Try to bring somebody. I ain't trying to say it's like a cult, but like if y'all bring one person who might be into it each time, it expands. It's like kimchi, y'all. I done said this before. It's like poetic kimchi. We got to get some new cauliflower up in here and a little bit of garlic and some other things. We got to get it all up in here. And that's not to diss anybody that's already here. That's just to say, as Trisha has shown us these last two times, fresh voices are nice. All right. Last thing. Anybody that has any haiku left, we're going to do a haiku battle for. You might not need more than three or four. Do it. Do it. Do it. You got do to. It. it ain't but like do nine of us here. You do got to. It. I do have a couple. That's right. probably all you need. Right. Oh. Who else? You got any more left, Monique? Okay. <laughs> you y'all got any left? Wanna come back up? Come on back up. The more the merry. Anybody else? Alright, that's six. That's six folks. Haiku Battle Royal. One and done. I'm going to call two names. They're going to do a round. Whoever loses, I'm going to sit back down. Last one standing wins the Battle Royal. Coming on the rainbow side, Mo. Coming on the pirate side, Jason. Mo, you get to go first. Dog scratching shakes bed. Or is it masturbation? Husband wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> Jason? This is my haiku. It has an extra syllable because fuck the rules. <laughs> judges. All right, Mo took it. Our judges are maintaining the rules, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what I was getting into. <laughs> Rainbow side, Dolly. Pirate side, Fran. Dolly, you get to go first. <clears throat> Received card today to show dystopian doctor that I'm a whore. Friend. <laughs> Early morning hikes with no doubt stuck in my head. You know, spider <laughs> Judges. <laughs> Dolly took it. All right, give it up for Fran. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rainbow side, Paul. Pirate side, Angie. Jock itch from laptop, simmering thighs. Conclusion, give us extinction. <laughs> Green snakes wind away from me as I reach into the blackberry bush. Judges. Paul took it. Thank you, Angie. Rainbow side Mo, pirate side Dolly. Now, I don't know if y'all know this, the rainbow side has won every one in this battle world so far. And the rainbow side won the death match. And the rainbow side won the high slam finale. You're the rainbow side. You're trying to say. It would be astrological. It's magnets. what I'm saying. It's the light of the miracle. All right, Mo, you get to go first. Asian-Mexican fusion left us confused, sad, and headed elsewhere. <laughs> This poor fool man is so southern gothic that he just dug my mom's grave. Y'all giving up your mother. Rainbow side Paul, pirate side Dolly. Paul, you get to go first. Sweet spot of psych meds, spinning numbness function or buzzing along edge. Dolly. Hmm. I wish I could get back the time I spent reading Jonathan Franson. Judges. <laughs> Paul took it, y'all. Y'all give it up to Dolly. Come on, 
thirty dollars for winning the battle roll. Yeah. I have books and buttons for sale. I have zines. One of them is a new zine that just came out in the last month. I take donations on zines, but if you came here tonight, you are welcome to have zines. Don't take no damn buttons for free. You can have zines for free. I have a Patreon. I know all y'all broke. Half the people who support my Patreon are broke. I was talking to Silver about that when we started, because like people will get declined on your Patreon because their card ain't right or something happened. And half the people on my Patreon I know personally. So like their card will get declined. And I feel guilty. Because I'm like, damn, they had five dollars a month that got declined. And they probably got did they get an insufficient fee charge too? Then I start to feel bad for my friends, because I know that feeling when you like two dollars off and then two dollars spirals into a hundred and forty dollars off and it gets worse and worse and you like come on Friday and now you can't even float a check at Kroger which I used to be able to float a check for groceries on like Tuesday night and then it wouldn't go in the bank until Friday but there was the last place you could do that and now they're electronic too so you can't do that no more so ain't no more flow. anyways what I'm saying is I have a Patreon patreon.com slash Raven Map a lot of things are free on there, a lot of them ain't. Circulate my shit. I got a website, I'm on Facebook with links going out for it, Twitter, Instagram. Circulate my shit amongst people who might support weird shit like me, because it helps. People love to hear somebody say, yo, you know this crazy dude Raven, he does shit I bet you like. Or you know this crazy person Monique, like she did this haiku's name. Or you know crazy ass Dolly or Angie or Trisha. Like, telling people means so much more than sharing a link sometimes. So if y'all could, tell people about me. Let them know about me. I'm doing shit out here, y'all. I'm hustling every damn day. I work every damn day at all the dumb shit I do. And it's beautiful dumb shit, and I love it. And this is part of that. And this ain't even mine. This is ours. So, we're going to do this again. October? That's two months from now. September is two months from now. September, I'm going to talk to Twilight and Silver, figure out a Friday night, we're going to come back. August 14th, we're in Charlottesville at the T Bazaar. Y'all make the trip to Charlottesville, come check it out. We got it popping there. It's a nice spot. I don't know who the hell wants to go on a road trip on Labor Day weekend, but I'm doing it in Blacksburg on Labor Day weekend. I do this damn shit anywhere because you know why? I love crazy ass people. And I love all y'all. Thank you for sharing your Friday night with me. Don't forget Z. Good night, y'all.